Start with your name. Okay. I'm Betty Goodo Hooks. Um, I was I was born in 1936, so I was kind of young when the soldiers had the big maneuvers here in this area, and they dug foxholes behind our house. I mean, like a hundred yards behind our house. And the soldiers were down there, and uh, we used to bake cookies and fix coffee and go down and give them coffee and cookies. And uh, it it was interesting. We were just children. But it, it was an amazing time. All these strange people, you know, just everywhere. They were in town. You couldn't go to town without... The streets were just crowded with soldiers. And, uh, you know, we were all very nice to soldiers. And I can remember my dad, if we were going anywhere and some of them were hitchhiking, he'd stack as many as he could. He'd stop along the road and put as many as he could to take them as far as he was going. And, you know, today we wouldn't do that. But back then, they picked the soldiers up and give them a ride to Lake Charles or anywhere the way they were going. And I can remember uh, all the horses. And uh, I understand that not long after they had the maneuvers, I mean, several years later, that they did away with the horses. They had the the uh, jeeps and and motorized uh, vehicles and they had no use for the horses and i remember one horse that came up to our house and our dogs would chase her off and she'd come back and finally my dad was a horse person he loved horses he just took her in and he realized that that she was pregnant so she had that colt. But these horses, these men were so attached to their horses that they realized they were taking them by the train loads and taking them to the so-called glue factories to, to kill them. And they would take their horses out and just turn them loose. And uh, that's, there's still a herd of wild horses, I understand, up at Fort Polk. But uh, lots of people ended up with some of the soldiers' horses that they just turned loose. It was an interesting time to grow up. Uh, I, I think it was a wonderful time. We, we didn't have a lot, but we didn't, have, we didn't do without. My mother raised our beef, and she always had hogs that they butchered. We had chickens, and she always had a great big garden. And this was the time that we lived in, and this, uh, Mama always told us that uh, we didn't have to be afraid of the soldiers. She says, you know, they're just people. They're men. They, just like our men, they put their pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> I can remember Mama saying that. But uh, we were nice to them. But it was just a, an interesting time, and it was a strange thing to happen suddenly that they had these huge maneuvers in this area. Uh, when I was 14, I started working at Morgan Lindsay, downtown DeRitter. And I've seen a lot of these old buildings just let go and tore down. I married Jimmy Hooks in 1954, and his father had started his own store in 1947. And the store was right down the street from Morgan Lindsay, and I worked in the candy counter. And at that time, you bought candy by the ounces. You'd buy 10 cents worth of candy. I had a little scale there, and I'd weigh it out, and then I'd give, uh, give how many ounces you paid for and in a little cellophane bag. We didn't have plastic. It was cellophane. And I'd staple the top of it and hand it to you. And the, the candy was in big bins all around and I, I worked in there and it was my job to keep it all clean and well stocked and Jimmy worked right down the street and I had met him at school but when he realized I was working down there he came down pretty often to buy candy from me 
But uh, this is, and I saw lots and lots of soldiers too. They come in and they bought candy and they bought, well, our a dime. It was called Morgan Lindsay five and ten cent store, but it was I can't don't know if we something like the dollar stores now. Uh, just had a little bit of everything. But Jimmy and I married and we left and we were gone for about three years, three and a half years. And when we come back, our son was born here and Jimmy went to work with his father. And uh, we moved the store from down on South Washington up to North Washington. And Jimmy and I bought the buildings. We had, we have saved four buildings downtown because people most of the people that owned them didn't live in town and they had just let them deteriorate every building we went into the first thing we had to do was put in a new roof then we had to put all new electrical wiring because they haven't hadn't wired them good and they had just sat there for years with this old wiring but it was interesting saving these old buildings our main store now on North Washington was the Uptown Theater. And uh, we had lots of entertainment in the Uptown Theater. I can remember going there and seeing several uh, the movies, of course. We saw all the old movies, but I can remember them bringing in people uh, who were famous. One of them was Al Lash LaRue, and he came from Louisiana, and he became, he was a soldier when he got out. They made a movie star out of him because he was a, a war hero, but uh, they he had a whip, and he could take a cigarette out of a man's mouth. <laughs> but uh, that was just, that was our entertainment, what we, things we see on TV now. But it was very interesting being able to save these old buildings. The Uptown Theater, was first a barber shop back during the lumber days. And we came across an old sign painted on the brick on the wall when we were renovating it. And it was painted with a paintbrush and it said, hot baths, 50 cents. So it was the barber shop and people would come in from working in the lumber uh, yards and bringing in the timber and everything. and. And they would uh, come in there, and I guess they'd get a shave and a, and a haircut and, and a hot bath. But the back of the building was a mortuary. And I still have some, those people never threw anything away. I still have some of the old bottles that had embalming fluid in them. And I came across these rolling uh, handmade uh rolling little little uh, looked like a cart but the thing was eight feet long and about 24 25 inches wide with rollers on it well i took some of them home and they're still at my house we made a storeroom and i used them for shelves we built shelves around the storeroom in them but come to find out that's what they used to move the coffins around on uh, but uh the back of the store had great big double doors, and the cement ramp is still there. But uh, they brought the horse-drawn um, carriages in to go and have the uh, for the funerals. And it, I don't have any pictures, but that would be very interesting to see one of those horse-drawn hearses. But uh, it. It's so interesting to do these old buildings and the thing we come across. One of the signs that we have that was up in the attics is bring your whole family to see a movie on Friday night for 75 cents. The whole family can come in. And uh, there, there's not much, uh, wasn't much left. The old theater seats, I have had them recovered and we put them back in our shoe department and fitting. But do you know that most people can't sit in those seats right now? I can sit in them, but they're lower to the ground. 
and they're not very big. <laughs> so we have had to put in bigger seats for bigger people. But we, we've seen things change and things you don't realize are changing so much, particularly the size of people. Um, but um, a, a man who is 6'2 and probably weighs close to 200 pounds would not be comfortable in those old theater seats now. But um, I, I can't think of anything else to, to say about it. I do, I do know I have enjoyed this community in Derrida and I've enjoyed growing up here. And to show you how things have changed, I learned to drive when I was 10 years old. And I drove the old the truck in the hay field for my dad and the men to load hay onto the back of the truck. And uh, back then it was this old four in the floor stick shift. And I can remember popping that thing and they'd yell at me to stop doing that, which I couldn't help because I could hardly, I barely could sit on the edge of the seat and reach the gas pedal. But I, I was the oldest of six children and we used to come to the theater on, uh, on Sunday afternoon and I would drive that old truck and I would park it across from where the library is right now and I'd park it there because I couldn't hardly get the thing in reverse. So I could park it there and my brothers and sisters, we'd all go to the movie, we'd come out and I could go around and never have to put it in reverse. But um, you know, I know I didn't have a driver's license because I remember getting my driver's license when I was about 16. But here I was at, at 14 years old driving that truck to town so we lived in a very interesting, different life, and things have changed so much. And it really wasn't dangerous, me driving, because the traffic only went about 25 to 30 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, we had gravel roads, and it, it wasn't safe to go very fast. But it was very interesting, and I can't think of anything else to say. Well, how many people live in Dorado about the time of World War II? I'm not sure. Uh, I have a picture that was taken in the early 50s, and it shows the downtown streets of Derrida, and you could count the light posts. There was only about 20 light posts. So I'm not sure how many people lived in Derrida at that time. Uh, we thought there was a lot of people, you know. <laughs> but uh, we knew most of the people. And it was, uh, you know, you saw them in school or saw them in church. And mm -hmm. the schools and the church were most of our uh, entertainment. And this civic center, I can remember when we were in junior high, the, the PTO organization, the parent teachers organization, would have uh, parties down here and dances. And they had a jukebox back there where the stage is. And the PTO would put quarters back there, just a dish full of quarters, and we'd play the songs on the, we'd play them on the uh, jukebox, and that's what we learned to dance to. And we, we enjoyed it. Is that the jukebox but over there? It, no, that's not the jukebox. The one that we had was a big round one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a big round one. And, uh, but, we we enjoyed the music, and uh, other than listening to the radio, you know, we didn't have much music. That's great. Okay. Thank you very much. I thought that was wonderful. Well, I wish I could think of some more. <laughs> have you seen it?